I did kind of get paid once doing stand up at a Harlem show, but, but it was all right. I'll give you the quick story. It was yeah. um, a, sh- a show I did at um, a spot called the Hexagon Lounge. Um, it's in Harlem. Yeah, it's it's kind of it's super niche. Like it's like if if you didn't know anything about Harlem, you wouldn't even know it's there. And there's a guy uh, that uh, that's in same name names, but it's like a uh, uh, so easy. Um, <clears throat> it's a guy there that um, hosted, it, and it was um, <laughs> it never did comedy there before. Yeah. And like he was a comedian, he was like, ah, you know, some open mic guys he invited me. You know, Eileen, right? Um, I, harder, right? Yeah, 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 Boston. Wicked, yeah, wicked um, shit. Wicked, yeah, <laughs> wicked, I, yeah. Her and mood it. Um, all three of us were just there, sitting, waiting. Like, all right, cool. This is this is cool. This is cool. And um, the the yeah. MC was a poet. And we found out it was actually poetry night featuring some comedians who happened to be there. So like the 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 the, the guy goes up and he just starts like black dude, heavy set, like a, a older guy. It's like ah, uh, you know, white people have enslaved all of us. Our lives are in shambles. Like slavery was a bad thing. Civil rights, Barack Obama. All right, we got some comedians here who is uh, gonna make you laugh, and like that was the bar. He set the bar like that for us to be funny. And oh, I think I heard about this show actually. Yeah, somebody told me about this. <laughs> Holy shit, man! It is fucking ah oh, boy. And like <laughs> most of it, like we were just eating it. Like Eileen went up, she she did a goddamn thing. I'm proud of her. But she she ate it. Like really, she ate it. And she was first, so she had like the bullet spot. So of course it's hard to fucking just take the bullet spot in general. I went up second, and to my surprise, I did pretty good. Like, I don't like to brag about shit in general. I'm just fucking I'm that type of guy, but I did pretty good. And I was going into some some bit, and for some reason I don't know what it is. Black people just do not like jokey jokes. So most of it was just me doing work in the room, doing crowd work. It was ah, this guy. How about that guy? That guy's the guy too. And then I I was going to some old bit I used to do. Hey, how's it going, man? Good to see you. Like an old bit I used to do, I don't even do anymore. Like something, something. Oh, you know, something. Uh, you don't make a lot of money doing comedy. Like, yeah, you know, I'm so poor, blah, blah. And um, one of the guys at the bar behind me, was like, hey, man, don't say that shit, bro. That's fucked up. I was like, nah, man, because I'm trying to get into the joke and he's interrupting. Like, nah, man, you don't understand. You don't. You know how poor I was? Or I can even hit the fucking punchline. Like, ah, fuck that shit. He hands me a hundred dollar bill in front of everybody. And they just start losing their shit. Ah, oh, shit, yeah. You know, black people. And uh, like um, another black guy sees that and he's like, nah. For some reason black people don't like to be upstaged. Like, nah, fuck that shit. And then some other guy hands me another hundred dollar bill. And then they go even more crazy. Like, holy shit, ah, you ain't poor no more. Blah, blah blah and in that situation either two things could happen either a i was gonna get robbed afterwards or b you gotta play for the room and like ah see y'all set me up the old malcolm x get your hand out my pocket routine i'm not falling for the banana in the tailpipe but they just i proceeded to just keep doing my horse shit and that i that's a good memory to have at a place if you do comedy so i'm i go into it thinking ah, oh, it's real, real much bro. i'm I'm the man here. <laughs> and he invited me the next week to be on a show. And I, I just, one of those instances where you, your hubris fucks, fucks you over. And you, like, you get that ego, then it's a problem. I go to the show that he invited me to. And I'm like, I'm wearing my best things, I'm wearing shoes that I never wear, some skinny jeans and a shirt. And I'm like, I invited all my friends. <laughs> and I'm like, all right, cool. Watch this, man. I hey. They know who I am. I'm 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 a, I'm a big star here, and I go up and I ask for ten minutes straight, just shit eating, shit eating, shit eating. Nobody's laughing. People are just just or a lot of man. Oh, I see what you did there, man. And it's some, some broad at the at the bar. So it's oh. Um, your sarcasm isn't working. You're, it's not. Uh, 
it's not funny because I have like a very monotone way of delivery. You know, it's, it's not working now, boo. And it got so bad that they had to cut my microphone off to get me on stage. <laughs> and just like, all right, uh, you know, be watching guys, uh, comedy is, is very, very hard. You guys have to understand this is the MC after I got off. Like, you got to understand that it's not for everybody, man. You know, let's give another hand for this guy. And that humbled me so much, right? I, 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 I just got loud. No, don't do it. That's a great story. Yo, you might have to post on, on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, <it's>, <laughs> it was uh, it was one of those. Uh, if you have anything for anybody starting out now, just remember, just don't uh, try to be humble. <laughs> it'll, it'll keep you longer than you know. 